Oakley Doakley. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, applications of exponential functions and logarithmic functions. Now, this is going to cause some of you some grief, but I'm sure if you keep plugging away at it, you will make some sense. Now, we looked at the beginnings of this chapter in section 4.1, all right? Compound interest was one of those things we looked at. Here's an example of two versions of your compound interest, okay? Uh, and what I'd like to show you quickly here as well are what these variables mean. Now, I'm going to go through this pretty quick here because we've already done it before, okay? So P is your principal in both cases. R is your rate in both cases as expressed as a decimal. So if you have six and a quarter percent or 6.25 percent, you need to change it to 0 0.0625 in order to use it in either of these calculations, okay? The T is uh, the time in years in both situations. Uh, the N is an, addi an addition up here. It is the number of compounding periods per year, okay? If you compound it monthly, daily, weekly, semi-annually, quarterly, biannually, bimonthly, semi-weekly, bi-weekly, all these different things have a different number of compounding periods per year, okay? And that's gonna change your rate. So you take your rate, divide it by how many times you compounded a year, and the number of compounding periods times the number of years. So if it was 12 every month, your interest rate, yearly interest rate divided by 12, 12 times a year times the number of years, okay? And in this case, it's simply the rate times the number of years, where that compounding thing has been taken consideration in the E. Since it's a natural growth, continuous growth is when we start using E, okay? So if it ever says compounded continuously, you need to use this version here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of questions. Uh, we'll look at this one first here and see if we can make some sense of it, okay? You invest 7,500 bucks at 5.3% for 12 years. How much if you compounded it quarterly? So we started off, but well, we don't know what the A is. We started off with 7,500 bucks, right? We're not equaling anything yet. We're multiplying it by one plus. Now your rate is 0.053. Um, compounded quarterly, so that's four times a year, and that's four times a year for 12 years. So what you're going to do in your calculator is simply that. You're going to go one, uh, I'm going to start in the middle. I start in here because it makes it easier. 0 0.053 divided by four, boom. And then I add the one and I hit enter to the power of four times 12 is 48. And then I multiply it by the original amount and I have an answer of $14,107.78. Okay, if you want more practice doing compound interest, I suggest you look at section 4.1. Now, we're going to look at the second version here. We're going to compound it continuously now. So we still start off with A, it's still 7,500 bucks, but now we're using E as my base. The rate is 0 0.053, and you're doing it for 12 years. Nothing could be simpler in this case, okay? All we're doing is using our calculators, and in this case, I can do the whole thing. So notice, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, notice that the e has an exponent, right? So e to the power of what? Well, I'm just going to go 0 0.0553 times 12. And I get an answer that is going to be a little bit more than what we had over there because uh, we are compounding it more often. So you can see that there's a difference in money in earnings, okay? So that is compound interest. And again, if you want more info, go check out video 4.1. So now we're going to look at growth and decay formulas. And I am going to have two versions here as well, but I want to just briefly go over the first one. Um, notice how, well, actually, you know what? I'll do them both at the same time. Look at this. Here they are, okay? This is for continuous growth only. Now, most real things, most natural things occur uh, or have continuous growth. The only time you wouldn't have continuous growth, in my opinion, is if you're talking about interest, it's compounded every year. So you have the same amount of money for the whole year, and then boop, it jumps up, and then boop, it jumps up, or it could be like a cab ride, or I don't know. There's different types of functions, uh, different types of situations. If your value remains constant for a little while, remains constant, and then jumps up in increments, that's not continuous growth, right? But it's more likely that if you're talking about animals, plants, natural surroundings. So it could be light, it could be sound, it could be energy of some sort, it could be a, a variety of different things. If, you're, if they're following some sort of natural progression, then this is more likely the one that you're gonna use, okay? But we're gonna use both, just to exemplify what it is that we're doing, okay? So now, uh, let's look quickly 
at uh, the, what these variables mean, A, O, A, O. It's the same as the principal, A naught, they call it, the initial amount, okay? The multiplication factor here is X. So if you have an increase of, say, 15%, then your X will be 1.15, because you have to include the original one, right? If you had a decrease, let's say, of 12%, right, your X is going to be, uh, what is it going to be? Is it going to be 12.12? Well, you started with 100%. If you take 12% away, you have 88% left. So that would be your X value for the uh, decrease of 12%. T is the time elapsed, and T is the growth time or decay time. So if it's every year, your big T is 1. If it's every 20 years, your big T is 20. If it's every 3 days, then your T is 3 days. Okay, so... Um, again, just practicing those is what we need to do. Down here, you're going to be doing the same question using different formulas, okay? But the difference is in how we solve, the answer will be slightly different, but both should be acceptable, okay? This one is likely going to be more accurate depending on the situation, but again, we'll be dealing with those as they come up. The only difference here is that the E is what we call a growth uh, a natural growth constant. It just happens to be around 2.71828, blah, 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 blah. Hit it on your calculator and find out if you want, right? Look, here's your E button. So E to the power of 1. There it is, 2.71828.1828. It looks like it's repeating. I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, K is your growth constant, and T is your time elapsed. Now, the thing with this one is that we often need to find that K value first. Every situation, even though it's natural growth, every situation has a different growth constant. And we find that growth constant by putting in numbers that we know, finding the K, and then plugging it into the question. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple different questions. If we look at this one... For example, hold on, I'm getting there, kind of tough. And, well, let's start with this one. Let's do this here. So hopefully you have the formulas. I'm going to slide this up, okay? So the population in Squamish in 2001 was 14,780. Maybe I could slide it down so you can see them both still. Uh, 14,780, okay? And in 2012, it was... 16,890. At this rate, what is the population in 2020? So, if we use the first formula up here, right, I've got 16,890 now, or in 2012, I had 14,780 to begin with, and what I'm increasing, I don't know what I'm increasing by. So, um, it's not that. It's times x to the power of uh, t over 1, because the growth is every year, okay, it occurs every year, oh, wait, time elapsed, no, 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 and how long did that take? It took 2,000, so it's 11 years, and the growth rate is per year, so it's 11 over 1, okay, so now the basic math that you have to do is combine these, so we have 16,890 divided by 14,780, and you get 1.14276 is equal to x to the power of 11. Now, if you wanted to solve that, a couple of different ways. You can turn it into logs if you wanted to, or you could also see that it's the 11th root of 1.14276. That's going to be my growth factor, right? So we need to find our growth factor here. So I'm going to find the 11th root of this, which means putting it to the power of 1 over 11. And you get 1.0122. So your growth rate is 1.012, which if you look at it in a percent wise, it's 1.2% growth, right? So now what we have to do is actually take that and apply it into the situation. So I want to know what the population will be in 2020. So I don't know what it was, but I do know that it was 14,780 uh, in 2001. My growth rate now is 1.012 to the power of, uh, what is it? It's 19, and it does it every one, so it's over 1. So now the math is easy. Again, 1.012 to the power of 19, because it's over 1, right? So 19 over 1 is just 19. 
times 1, 4, 7, 8, and you have a population of 18,539 come 2020. Okay? Now that is using this original function here. Notice how we had to find the growth rate as well, right? Well, what's the difference if we use this other one, right? So you have that, you have that, and you have time. You don't have the K. Okay, so we need to do the same kind of thing. We work backwards here. 16,890 is equal to 14,780. Uh, e to the power of uh, what it is from 2001 to 2012 is 11 K. Okay, now if you divide the 16,890 again, 16,890 divided by 14,780, you get 1.14276, 14276, okay, equals e to the 11k. Now, I guess solving equations using e is kind of the other thing, right? So remember that log base e is equal, of x is equal to ln x, right? So um, also, if you can remember, uh, log base x of x is equal to 1. Well, that means that ln e, or, or sorry, log base e of e is equal to 1. So ln e is equal to 1, right? There's a couple rules here as well. Remember, log base e of x is ln x. And if you have the same base and the same thing there, it's equal to 1. So that's where these come from as well. And that's kind of the idea. So we can log both sides, we can ln both sides, or we can convert it into log form. Log base E of 1.14276 is equal to 11K. So now if you divide both sides by 11, right, this is log base E, so it's ln 1.14276 divided by 11, and you get your K value, okay? So um, let's ln this whole number, right? Ln that whole number, divide it by 11, and you get a K of 0.01213. Let's use that as my K value. And now it's a matter of plugging the formula in, using the same formula, but you're not having this, right? So how much you have is dependent on what you started with, 14,780e to the power of, well, now I have 0 0.01213 from 2001 to 2020 is 19 years. And here we go. So it's going to be 14,780, right? times e to the power of 0 0.01213 times 19, boom, and I get 18610, which is pretty damn close to what I had here before, right? We had this number here, and I have this number here, pretty damn close. This one here, the e value is probably more correct. So this is where we are going, ladies and gentlemen, and I have one more example that I would like to show you. It's a growth one again, okay, and um, it deals with an ant colony. So I'm going to use this first one here, uh, the A naught here. There are, it's a similar type of question, okay, where I have a million ants. I do have a growth rate already. Uh, how long before there are a million ants? So this is where we're looking for the actual exponent number. Okay, so let's check it out. I've got a million ants, right? I started with 5,000. My multiplication factor is 1.18 because it's growing, and it does it every year, so it's over 1. I'm looking for how much time that is. This is a pretty simple equation to solve. If you divide both sides by 5,000, right, you end up with 200 is equal to 1.18 to the power of just t because it's over 1. Now, this is simple log stuff, guys. You log base 1.18 of 200 is equal to t. So this is going to be log 200 over log 1.18 equals t. So you get log 200 divided by log 1.18, and you get 32 years pretty much. Okay, So it takes 32 years to get to a million. That's using this formula here. I'm just going to show you that if we use this other one, it's the same thing. 
but I need to do a little bit of extra work here. Okay, so if I have a million, blah, 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 equals 5,000, let's go e to the kt. Okay, um, what I don't have is the t. Hold on a sec here, let me just figure something out. Oh yeah, so I don't, I need to find the t here, so hold on. But I know that after one year, right, if after one year, so just 1k, so k times 1, I'm going to have 18% more. So 5,000 times 1.18, because that's the growth rate, gives me 5,900. So I'm going to have 5,900 here. And you'll realize that if you divide by 5,000, you're going to have 1.18 is equal to e to the power of k. Okay, now that's actually my growth rate. So 1.18 is e to the k. But what I need is a proper k to use in this formula here. So let's solve for k, right? And that would be involving logging both sides. So I can go uh, log base e of 1.18 is equal to k. All right, which means um, this is ln. So ln 1.18 is equal to k. And this is my k value. I would leave it like that when I go back and now find out how long it's going to take to get to a million, right? 5,000 e to the power of ln 1.18 times how many years? Well, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for how many years it's going to take me to get to a million. It took me one year to get to 5,900. How many years to get to a million? So we do the division here by 5,000. You get 200 is equal to e to the power of ln 1.18t. So log base e of 200 is equal to ln 1.18t. So this is now ln 200 divided by ln 1.18. You get t. So let's see if that works. ln 200 divided by ln 1.18. Boom. Oops, sorry, I did that wrong. Uh, ln 200, enter, divided by ln 1.18. Boom, 32 years, just like before. Now, <coughs> excuse me. I know <coughs> some of these are tough. I've only done two or three examples. There's so many more examples to do. And um, what you're going to need to do is just plug your way through them. I'd suggest trying both of these situations, okay? Uh, in, in, in the case of compound interest, you don't really have to do both because if it's continuous, we use this one. If it's giving you a compounding period, specifically, we use this one. For growth and decay formulas, you actually have an option. Uh, I would suggest trying both just to get the handle on them. And uh, come and ask me any questions and hopefully we'll sort you out.